The Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you. And I will lead back your captives from every place. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear people of God, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and for strength. I confess May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of an open door to heaven, and I heard the trumpet-like voice that had spoken to me before, saying, Come up here, and I will show you what must happen afterwards. At once, I was caught up in spirit. A throne was there in heaven, and on the throne sat one whose appearance sparkled like jasper and cornelian. Around the throne was a halo as brilliant as an emerald. Surrounding the throne, I saw 24 other thrones on which 24 elders sat, dressed in white garments with gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. Seven flaming torches burned in front of the throne which are the seven spirits of God. In front of the throne was something that resembled a sea of glass like crystal. In the center and around the throne, there were four living creatures covered with eyes in front and in back. The first creature resembled a lion. The second was like a calf. The third had a face like that of a man and the fourth looked like an eagle in flight. The four living creatures, each of them with six wings, were covered with eyes, inside and out. Day and night, they did not stop exclaiming, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before the one who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever. They throw down their crowns before the throne, exclaiming, Worthy are you, Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. Because of your will, they came to be and were created. The word of the Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Praise the Lord in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his strength. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him for his sovereign majesty. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. 
Praise him with the blast of trumpet. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Holy, 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 mighty God. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem. And they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, A noble man went off to a distant country to obtain a kinship for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, Engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, We do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kinship, he had the servants called, to whom he had given the money, to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to the servant, too, he said, you take charge of five cities. Then the other servants came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not lay down, and you have as what you did not plant. He said to him, with your own words, I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down, and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in the bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, Take the gold coin from him and gave it to the servant who has them. But he said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has more, who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now, as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, Bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. God is good. And all the time. So as we near the end of the liturgical year, we are going to celebrate Christ the King soon. 
the readings that we've been hearing these days, and like today, the first and the gospel reading, draws our attention to the kinship of Jesus and the kingdom values, and we the citizens of the kingdom. So in the gospel reading of today, talking about his kinship, Jesus gives an analogy of a noble man who was resisted to not be king, but then he succeeded to be king. But before he went for his crown, we are told how he gave some resources to some of his citizens to be fruitful and engaged till he comes back. But before, when he returned, some indeed got themselves engaged and fruitful that they had about 10 more of what was given them. Another got himself engaged and fruitful and had five more of what was given. But another did not get himself engaged and so was not fruitful. And for that reason, he was punished. Along was those who resisted the kinship of the noble man. Understanding this, this, this parable of Jesus, we appreciate how Jesus himself, as noble as he was, leaving his kingdom, coming to save the people, was resisted. But after the resistance, that led to you know, his crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection, we know how he assumed into he was he ascended into heaven and took his position at the right hand side of God. That is the place he deserved and the place he came from as a king. But when the second come, he's not coming as a savior, but he's coming as our judge. And before he took his place by the right hand of God. He indeed, through the apostles, got us engaged and expected us and expect us to be fruitful. So you read Matthew 28, and he, he sent the disciples out to go preach the kingdom and baptize and bring people on board. And it's the same mission that through the apostles he gives us. But before he comes, the question he wants us to reflect and contemplate on today is that. Are we getting ourselves engaged in the kingdom values? And are we getting ourselves fruitful? Or we are getting ourselves in timidity in the kingdom values, and by so doing, not getting ourselves fruitful? It will be good on our part to be found at least wealthy, just as the first man who was fruitful in the tens and the other one who was fruitful in the fives. Far more better that, than the guy who out of fear and for other reasons buried the resources that was given him. We pray in this holy mass that when God comes, he may find us wealthy and fruitful in the kingdom valleys. But the question we continue to contemplate on is how engaged and how fruitful are you in the kingdom business. Trust in our merciful Father, let us offer him our prayers this day. For bishops, priests, and deacons, may God continue to enlighten them in knowledge and grant them wisdom in judgment. And for leaders of nations, may God guide them in the ways of truth and humble service. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor, may God comfort them and use his church to meet their needs. And for our faith family, 
May God help us to use our gifts and talents for the benefit of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who have asked for our prayers, those who need our prayers, and those who have no one to pray for them, especially the sick, that God may go to their aid. And for all who have died, as they trusted Christ in, his li in this life, may he reward them with endless joy in the next. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord in the silence of our hearts, let us put before God our various intentions. Merciful God, you know our needs before we can speak them. Please answer our prayers according to your holy will. We ask through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and of human hands, that it may become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of divine and work of human hands, that it may become for us our spiritual friend. Pray, my dear people of God, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord God Almighty. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the price of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise thee and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, You are indeed holy, O Lord, in the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new folk, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, given thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given out for you in a similar way when Sapa was ascended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in our presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your chest spread through all the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with the men in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will. Your holy and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other this sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. To be near God is my happiness, to place my hope in God is the Lord.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O oh Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Prayer of Pope Leo to St. Joseph. To you, O blessed Joseph. St. Michael the Archangel, 